Kalimera, buongiorno. Uh, thank you very much for being uh, today with us. Today uh, is the public presentation of uh, uh, our book. Uh, it's public because it's through the two and uh, way. Um, um, media systems in, in Europe, uh, continuities and discontinuities uh, is a book uh, uh, which is the, the product of our, one of the products of our uh, project. And uh, doesn't work, this one. Again, again, it doesn't. Okay, it worked now. Now, uh, what does it aim, this, uh, this book? It aims to present the evolution of uh, media systems group. And this is the reason that we have with us Paolo Tini, who is one of the uh, two people that who hold seminar book with Daniel Kalin about comparative media systems and students of them to follow. Uh, we're not students anyway, no, no, no. and colleagues and friends. <laughs> and uh, Cristiano uh, Ruggiero, uh, who is uh, our colleague from University. And also, he will be discussing our book. And of course, as usual, and as always, uh, Andrea Mikomi, uh, who is also the, uh, the coordinator of the whole project. Now, uh, as I said, the book presents the evolution of media systems in Europe. It discusses the media systems of the European, basically, the European media uh, and union. In States throughout a rather uh, regional perspective. It is based on the collection, thematic collection say, of data related to statistical trends, media production, consumption. But most importantly, the book is open access, and this is because of our suggestion uh, to the European uh, community. Uh, but it's very good for, for you because. Uh, you can uh, download it and read it anytime at your computer. So since this is a, a project about platforms, this is in one platform that you can download it anytime. And uh, we hope that it uh, represents an unprecedented perspective of communications field evolution with respect to all uh, types of uh, media. Where it comes from, as I implied uh, before, it comes from uh, the, the, it's a part project, Jumeplat. Uh, the acronym is exactly it's European Media Platforms Assessing Positive and Negative Technologies uh, for European Culture uh, that has received the funding from the European Union Horizon Research 2020 Research Service. Uh, the project aims to present, one of the aims, I would say, is to present an account of the contemporary media field, focusing of the trends as well as on the challenges in the national media systems in the European uh, space. But Andrea Mekoni, who is the coordinator and the principal investigator of, this, uh, of our project, will tell you uh, more when the time comes to speak about it. Now, uh, uh, what is about the book and how is structured? The uh, the book is organized five chapters, one introduction and a concluding uh, part. Uh, uh, on the one hand, I would say it deals with the theoretical evolution the media models and research by the seminal work again by Kalin and Mancini. Uh, and uh, on the other uh, part, it attempts to discuss the validity of these models, the age of media convergence, digitalization, and platformization. And who are the contributors? Because we didn't write the book alone, uh, it's a teamwork. Uh, this is the name of the authors, Thomas Anderson from ICAD in Sweden, Joanna Arthur Daiki, Achilleas Karadimitriou, and 
the annual diagnosis national annual cup edition at the University of Athens. This is Lava uh, Boshinakova and this is Lava Dankova from the New Hungarian University. Uh, uh, Volker and Barbara Toma, Volker Kranzburg and Barbara uh, Tomac uh, from uh, the Hans Bedrow uh, Institute in Germany. And of course, uh, myself and uh, Andrea uh, Mikonin. What is our hope? Uh, the book uh, tries or aims to uh, contribute to stimulating ongoing conversations in comparative media analysis. Uh, and uh, we would like to thank our colleagues for their contributions, given the many challenges uh, they should pass in producing this work. Uh, within this uh, context, uh, we should note uh, that the once again that the task eventually of collecting uh, data for such a long uh, period of time and incorporating so many countries was proven extremely difficult and surprisingly, I would say, uh, as we write in the book and in our research, we were really astonished uh, by the lack of available data, uh, their compatibility, even in the case that they were coming from the same research institutions. Some even for the European Audiovisual Observatory, which we would like to thank them very much for providing them, uh, provide us the uh, data. Uh, the way that they use the same methodology starts in 2014. From 2014, <laughs> then it doesn't have no data, so we we'll have to, to try to find the data. Uh, uh, when it comes to the newspaper field, <laughs> for example, we, uh, we got the data from the World Association of Newspapers, but they had data from 2005 to 2017, but not even 2020. Fortunately, I had the data in my own personal archive. So we try hard, and we try uh, another major problem, I would say, was with the Eastern European, the so-called Eastern European countries. Sometimes there were no data at all. Now, uh, what can we see looking backwards? I will use my one of my love, uh, the love writers, Neil Postman, uh, when he in his latest book, uh, Building the Bridge to the 18th Century, he wrote, and remember in the past, must keep in mind, while it is no illusion, it is elusive, a collection of subtle memories immersed in ambiguities movements and oversimplifications. Nonetheless, uh, there is something there to see, uh, uh, to learn from, and uh, to provide material for new myths. That's what we did in this book, actually. And one of the myths and one of the uh, findings is that even you speak about South, North, Central, East, West, whatever, the press is in decline, and uh, uh, we, we saw it very well, this one. What we also saw is that radio is uh, uh, still uh, re residing across Europe, uh, although uh, uh, what we have seen that uh, radio listenership has slightly diminished in the last uh, 30 years with the biggest pop in Jordan. Southern Europe from 2005 to 2019. We also have seen that in, in Southern Europe, we like to or we have more radio stations, although we don't listen more. Uh, uh, the biggest, uh, but the biggest radio listenership is noted in, in Portugal and Spain. On the contrary, in Eastern Europe, and after a small drop listenership in 2019, is back into 2010s level, as you see. Uh, uh, we see about, uh, we still consider that uh, in, in Europe television, although the although internet has a very fast development in the last year, we see that uh, television is still strong, uh, keeps its position, but what we have seen that this continuing rise of the thematic channels stops in 2015 uh, everywhere, 
in every in any region of Europe, and this also uh, is because of the entry of the platforms and stream television. Uh, we also see that gradually the TV license is at stake. It's nothing that will comes uh, today. It's, it, it is a process that comes in the last 20 uh, year, uh, country after country, one way or another, abolishes and replaces in, in the beginning with the, the license fee with a tax. Uh, everybody understands that having tax instead of having uh, stable uh, revenues, uh, it's going to be a big problem in, in the years to come. We also see that uh, in, from 2015, uh, and we see the development of uh, IPTV everywhere and OTT, uh, and uh, it's not a coincidence that we see today that all of these, uh, uh, you know, uh, streaming TV operators uh, have a, a, a good development around Europe. Again, we see at the same time, which is obviously, uh, we see that Europeans migrate online everywhere, in the, in the, especially in the South and East, because they were uh, uh, very low uh, development in the beginning. But we also see that the, the social media are here to stay. And I have to say that was a surprise to us that Cyprus and Malta who have no high, uh, let's say, uh, high connectivity, high speed uh, internet, they, they also can call uh, as social media islands, uh, which is uh, another uh, discovery, this one. Now, what we have seen from the, the uh, and I go back to the, uh, we go back to the conclusions that Paolo and Daniel Hallin made, uh, uh, how many, 20 years ago, almost 20, uh, 19, 19, 19 years ago, okay. 18. 18 years, okay. But you write it since 22, 2000. <laughs> okay, that first of all, uh, what we have seen uh, that technology uh, has taken uh, the lead towards the harmonization of media systems, at least in the European Union. Secondly, we also have seen that the European Union, with its initiatives, policies, and supervision, has also played a significant role in the harmonization of media systems in Europe. And in my opinion, we don't have Europeanization, but we have the EUization of media in, in Europe. And of course, globalization uh, uh, was an important driver for these uh, processes. Uh, to, uh, to us, uh, Europe offers an ideal context of examining interactions uh, between global, regional, and, and national media processes, th something that we do not have seen in other regions or in other continents. The question is, therefore, to what extent European media are ready for the uh, platformization uh, era. Uh, the, the, the challenges, to a certain extent, are uh, similar to the ones Europe has faced in the analog era. We also see that European Union remains fragmented in terms of, of market and culture, and this makes the creative content a high-risk investment sector, whereas development and production of quality creative content is often very costly to produce. Uh, so, the concerns of, of the analog era are not too far away, but they are in a different way. Uh, the advent of the streaming uh, TV platforms has resulted in a sharp increase in the total volume of program hours, especially to after 2015, and consequently an increase in demands of programs. Uh, but European TV producer income is still dominated by program commissions and recommissions from the main traditional networks in its EU uh, national market. Uh, the problem, therefore, in, in, in Europe 
uh, lies in what is difficult to compete with the so-called, we used to say in the past, the Defi America, the American challenge. We believe that the American challenge is still here. And uh, we haven't found new ways how to, what to do. Uh, so more or less, we have seen that the American uh, pro fiction programming market dominates, and the Hollywood, of course, still dominates the world and, of course, the European market. And uh, Europe is the major uh, important and, in effect, consumer of uh, uh, U.S. fiction programming. So what we suggest is that we have to renew the trust and support of the public service uh, uh, broadcaster. So, of course, now we don't speak about public service broadcasting, we speak about public service uh, media platforms. And we have seen from the data that we've seen, actually, uh, and this is also obvious in, other, in the other packages of the, of the program, is that uh, only the public service media can uh, compete uh, the advent and the dominance of these technological giants like uh, Netflix, uh, Amazon, uh, or uh, Apple TV in, in, in Europe, because they produce, because they are free. This is the, the whole thing about it. And, uh, but we have to support the public broadcasters because they, they have to, and produce, in most of the cases, more domestic and European programming, or they, they, they disseminate European programming. They still offer a diverse of Zander mix, which is very important. And this is the quality, actually, the, the diversity equals to our, uh, as we understand it, to mm -hmm. quality. Uh, achieve a better audience reach, and in this way, they promote the European culture. So, as we understand, public uh, broadcasters or public platforms uh, play a central role uh, in platformization of national and EU media systems where citizens should come first. So, we suggest, and that was our main suggestions, uh, and it is one of the major suggestions of our project, is to that the EU should renew its trust, commitment, and support on public service media, a, a kind of a new master, if I can put it this way, uh, or a kind of new Amsterdam protocol or protocol of Amsterdam, uh, which will uh, support the public broadcasters. And secondly, the EU should make something to safeguard the press, because it's not only public service broadcasting, public service broadcasters, also, newspapers are part of our European cultural inheritance. So, we should find ways, solutions on how to preserve this newspaper culture, how to preserve uh, newspapers in the years to come, because as we have seen from the data, newspapers are not going to, to be with us in the years to come. Uh, and, our, and coming from a small or medium-sized media market, we also the, the European uh, Union should uh, see what is the uh, you know how to support the, the smaller European markets, the smaller European uh, um, uh, countries. And this is because some of the of the developments are not for the. All, you know, the same needs for the, the, the EU, uh, smaller European countries. So the European Union must adopt a policy framework that will help with funding and expertise smaller EU members, so better adjust their policies to the new initiatives and developments. And one final thing is that we knew one of our suggestions is that we knew new regulatory bodies, which now in, in the era of convergence, of digitalization, uh, and the, in the era with the advent of the platforms, we knew we need new regulatory bodies to oversee this new sector. 
uh, is not the same as it used to be in the past, that having only, in Italy you have it actually, uh, that having only uh, one authority to uh, oversee the broadcasting sector, another the telecoms, another whatever. So, uh, and with this, uh, I finish this uh, uh, presentation here and uh, I'm ready to give uh, a speech to, to Paolo uh, Mancini. Paolo, the floor is yours. All the... <laughs> uh -huh. Thanks. Thanks uh, to. Can I use yours? Of course. <laughs> uh, first of all, thanks, Andrea and Stelios, for the invitation. I'm very sorry that uh, I cannot uh, spend longer time with you, but uh, uh, I have a visit in the afternoon. The visit was reserved several months ago. I cannot move because otherwise I, I, I wouldn't know when I would meet my my doctor again, so very sorry. Uh, before going into the book, let me say something to what uh, regarding what you just said. Uh, you said the American challenge. I'm not sure that it's just American challenge. I would say now more and more is an American, Chinese, TikToker, but also Russian, Russian challenge. Uh, the son of my son, uh, four years old, uh, watches, of course, cartoons, and uh, he watches just Russian cartoons. Masha and Orzo, and another horrible cartoons. I don't remember what, what the main uh, figure of the cartoon. But the only cartoons that he wants to watch are the Russian one. So it means that. Uh, not just China with top, but also Russia with many other uh, production is trying to to export uh, uh, the, the, the culture. So I would not say that it's uh, just an American challenge. Of course, it's a, first of all, it's still an American, but there are new producers. There was Japan up to a few years ago when Japan entered into a crisis. But now there are no new nations, new countries that are producing good, uh, good material for the, for the media. OK, now about the book. First of all, look how good reader I have been. Eh? I have uh, notes for almost every page. So uh, now, but uh, I read the, I read the book that was very very interesting. I would say that uh, this is a, I will talk about the book, not about your past uh, last part of your presentation because it's not part of of of, of, of the book. Uh, I would say that this is a, a rich and useful book, and uh, why rich? Because there is a that there is a, a wonderful uh, discussion of existing literature on the idea of system. This is, this is very important, very rich, very well made uh, discussion of existing literature, but also data. Useful because there are data. There are data about the different European media system, which are not easy to find, as you say, we were not able to find uh, data that was possible to compare for many, for many different. So, rich and useful book. Uh, uh, a great work, very sophisticated book, uh, very good knowledge of existing literature. I could not do better than that. And uh, I wonder, uh, reading the first chapter of the book, uh, I was wondering where and how you have been able to find uh, so many texts regarding comparing media systems. For instance, I, I was struck by the, 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 quote, the quotation to Klein Stolberg. 
Trans Tower. Uh, all works, uh, you know, the Trans Tower passed away several years ago. And he was among the first who discussed our book. And he wrote very interesting papers. I don't remember if there are also books. Uh, and then, of course, he, he, he could not do more. But the, his works were very interesting to, 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 for us. Uh, and there are references to many other works. Uh, again, I wonder how you have been able to find papers and books that, uh, in some cases, I did not know. There are papers that you that you don't quote in the book, uh, but there are also papers that you quote that that, that uh, we did not know. When I when I say we, I'm referring to to myself and to them. For instance, I, I just sent a, a mail to them uh, when three days ago, say, telling him that I was coming to Rome to discuss this book, and he said, I don't know this book, but I have to read it. So, uh, so when I, uh, there are books and papers that uh, we don't know. So we have to thank you because there are quotations that are, are new for for uh, are new for for us. Not too young, you know, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very good. Uh, the empirical discussion of a different uh, media uh, European media system. Uh, uh, I noticed that uh, uh, knowing a lot of uh, existing literature on comparing media system, you you use a, a quite different, uh, how to say, placement of a different European media system. For instance, uh, for, uh, uh, regarding to Portugal, uh, and for the fact that Portugal is, is becoming a, a very different system from what we studied at that point, and for, uh, for UK. So very good, rich, very good empirical works, as you say, data on the different European uh, media media system. Uh, if I ever to say something less uh, polite is uh, about the chapter on uh, uh, Eastern European countries. Uh, for instance, in the introduction, in the introduction chapter, in the first chapter, you mention a lot of works on uh, Euro Eastern European countries. For instance, uh, the, the, the works by uh, my friend uh, Perusco uh, and the others. The, the papers and books that are not mentioned, that, that are not used in the, in the chapter on uh, Eastern Europe. Also, I can say this because... Um, uh, um, Perusco invites me every year into Blavnik for the uh, for the seminar that she organized on uh, 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 sort of summer week summer school in Dubrovnik uh, uh, on uh, systems of idea of media systems, and she told me that uh, she discussed with you about the chapter on uh, Eastern uh, European me media system. So that that chapter could could be enriched also by just reading and using uh, the papers and the books that uh, uh, you mentioned in 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 the first uh, in the first uh, chapter. Uh, this is about the book, but now. Uh, let me offer a further, a further improvement of a, of a question of system and model. Uh, this is what I want to discuss uh, with you. And uh, I would start uh, with uh, what you wrote at page 29, uh, using a quotation by by. Terry Rantanen. Uh, Terry Rantanen, uh, I discussed many times. I have several struggles with Terry, so it's not a good friend of mine. Nevertheless, uh, she wrote a very interesting, uh, very interesting paper that you mentioned on, on the idea of media system. And you quote from Rantanen, one may, one may question whether system is the right category for comparative analysis. And then you go on later on in the book, uh, you go on to a similar point asking 
if, uh, and this is another quotation, if the idea of model is not a vanishing one. So this is the point that I would discuss with you. I'm not sure that in 2023, the idea of system and therefore the idea of model two are useful ideas. Let me go back to something that uh, uh, I already told you in the lecture that you invited me to, to, to do. It was uh, a year ago, something yeah. like that. And uh, in that lecture, I, I spoke of deinstitutionalization. And I understood that both of you, Andrea and Stelios, were not happy with this idea. And uh, instead, I would go back to this idea, uh, this, uh, telling the same things, but with different words. Now, the issue is this. As you just said, we started to write the book in 1997. And the book was then published in 2004. So it took seven years to, to, to write the book. When we started to write the book 1997, internet did not exist. It existed in 2004, but was a poor thing. It was just at the very beginning. And we did not mention quite at all new media, internet, because it was not developed. Why I'm saying this? Because I'm sure that if we had to write the book in 2023, we would write something very different. This is the point. And uh, the, the, the today media ecology is very different from the one that we observe, we start to observe in 1997 and that, that we observe in 2004. Is a, a completely different media ecology. So this is why I, I, I'm not afraid to say that the ideas of systems and the ideas of models are vanishing ones in some way. I'm not sure that uh, that you can use the idea of system and the idea of model to for comparative. Uh, analysis. So in, in the previous lecture that I gave uh, within your project, I used the word uh, deinstitutionalization. I, I would, uh, I will, I will propose the same concept using different uh, words, if you don't like deinstitutionalization. But at the end, we go back to the same point. Because as Silvio Weisberg, I noticed that you quote a lot, Silvio Weisberg, Silvio Weisberg, and that authors. But in a book, in, in the book on, I don't remember the title of the book, he said something that very, very, very dramatic. The digital communication has revolutionized everything we knew about communication. This is the point. In the era of digitalization, I'm not sure that we can use the concept such as that of system or such as that of model that we use in 1997 in the pre-digitalization era. This is the point. Uh, the idea of system implies stability. A system is such, is a stable. I, 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 the Italian media system is such because uh, has been as it is now for many years. The Greek media system is such because it has been now, as you write it many times, in many pages of your book, now we live in the era of volatility in terms of politics, but also in terms of media structure. So the, 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 the idea itself of system derives from a situation of stability. I can observe the same structure. I can observe the same proceedings over the years. Today is not this is not our situation. The, the TikTok did not exist two years ago. Now everybody talks about that. I'm involved in some 
research on the election campaign, last year election campaign, and there are chapters on TikTok. Four years ago, there were no chapters on TikTok. This is, uh, and TikTok is a completely new stuff for the, the Italian media system, such as it is for, for, for the Greek one. Uh, so what I want to say is that the, the, the idea of a system implies stability. Now we we are not in a in an era of stability. We are, as you write, in an era of uh, volatility. System. Uh, the idea itself of system is based on the importance of institution. How the state institutions work. How the political parties institutions work how news outlets, organization, work, and so on. So systems are based on, on many different uh, stuff, but also on institutions. The fact is that such institutions, the state institutions, political parties institutions, uh, outlets, news outlets, institutions are becoming less and less important because we are moving towards an, an idea of media and politics that is more and more based on the role, on the action of single citizens. Of course, media institutions are important, state institutions are important, there is no way. I don't want to deny them, but, but what happens is that they are much weaker than before. They are part of the system, but social functions are moving from established institutions towards single dispersed citizens. I'm referring to social media, to blogs, uh, to citizen journalism, and so on. Uh, and the same happens with politics. Today, politics is marked by volatility. Uh, there is a good paper that you mentioned several times by uh, by Mattoni and Ciacobelli. Uh, they, they, they try to apply the ideas that were suggested in comparing media system to the new digital era, and they talk of uh, a shift from uh, old media from all politics to an era of non-elitarian politics, non-elitarian media. Because our media today and politics today is not anymore based on the old organizations, on the previous organizations. They're moving towards a different era. For instance, the idea of political power. Of course, it's still important, but it was much more important yes. in the past. Why? Because there were stable organizations, because there were stable political parties. They do not exist anymore. Are you sure? Quite, at least in Italy. What about Greece? I mean, uh, the Syriza. Where is, where is it? It exists now, but when it came to power, it tried to add its own media system. Yes, but so it failed. Is, I mean, it, it, it failed, it fa it, it failed to, to have a, a second Soviet in the election time in being in power. If it was in, for the second uh, you know, consecutive time, uh, things would maybe different. I mean, there is, as we say in the book, discontinuities, but there are also continuities oh, in, the sense, in the sense what found, if you allow me. In the sense that you said a very nice uh, sound of the parallelism. Parallelism used to be, is still on. This is my, my what I differed with your analysis. It's not the same, but it's still on. It's still there. It hasn't changed. Maybe they have changed clothes, but it's still the same. Because power, everybody wants part of the power uh, uh, on any position. In the, is, uh, I mean, your. Don't tell me that the, you say that there's no parallelism in, in Italy, but see how the, the, the politicians go around the media. 
But how are they going to get power out of that? There is no way. This is completely correct. But why political capital again? To exist the political parallelism, I would use the word that you use in the book, yes. instrumentalization rather political parallelism. Because the political parallelism implies stability. And today we have volatility. Syriza almost uh, disappeared. The Five Stars movement in Italy got the majority of the votes, tried to, to, to build connections with the media. He failed because he did not reach the, another victory another time. Because the, the system, the political system, is volatile again. So the, the idea of political parallelism in some way is built over stability. And today we don't have stability. This is the fact. It exists. There is no way it exists. But it's much less important. For instance, today, can I say which are the links between political parties and newspapers in Italy? This is much harder to say. Of course, there are rightist newspapers, there are leftist newspapers. But can I say that Corriere della Sera is close to the Democratic Party. I cannot say this because it's not true. It's close to uh, Fratelli d'Italia. No. It's, it's close to Forza Italia. No. So because of the, the parties uh, has lost importance, have lost importance. This is why I, I'm saying that the idea of system uh, uh, it, it, it exists, but it's vanishing as you say in the, in the book. It's much less important than, uh, than, than before. You insist a lot in the book, as you insist in your presentation, on the idea of platforms. In a way, I would say it could be said that the, the legacy news media organization are now replaced by platforms in some way. But the fact is that platforms don't have a national character. Yet. Yet. No, yet. Facebook can have a, 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 a national character, or, or X uh, can have a, a, a Twitter, can have a, a. So, system at least are less and less nationally based. And this is something that you write in, in the last part of the book, you could not say. So the idea of national media system, national media systems exist. There is no doubt, but they are less and less important because of, 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 of a new media ecology, of a new political ecology that you find in Italy, in Greece, but that, that you find uh, in many other places. Think of Macron in France, en marche. En marche was established uh, I don't remember the end of which year, three, uh, four or three or four months before the election. And he won the election. This is the volatility. So what kind of political parallelism uh, could exist in the era or in the moment in which a party was established and four months later won the election? Probably exists. There is some links, but much less important than, than before. Uh, I would stop here. Uh, the fact is that uh, it's not so much uh, an American challenge, but uh, I would say that more and more uh, digitalization implies uh, a dramatic cha challenge for media scholars. We need uh, new concepts, uh, new ideas to understand, assist, uh, to understand the something, a media ecology, a political ecology that is very different from the one that we observed in 1997 and in 2004. I don't want to say that systems do, do not exist today, but they are less and less important. And I'm not sure uh, that what we wrote in 1997 and then in 2004 can be applied at the same time. For instance, again, let, let me say something more. Uh, the, the one of uh, 
the, the idea that has been used a lot from our book as, is the idea of, again of political parallelism. All those who, write, who wrote something about our book talk about political parallelism. Now, the idea of political parallelism is much weaker because the media, in our idea, the news media were a parallel to something that do not exist anymore. We thought of political parallelism because there were links between Rai Uno and Christian democracy. Today, I cannot say, talk of political parallelism because Christian democracy did not, does not exist anymore. And there is no such a thing that replaced Christian democracy. There are many different things that today exist and tomorrow do, do, do not exist. Think of uh, uh, Georgia. Milon. She got 3% in the previous election and then 27%. This is the fact. It's not just that something did not exist, but the structure, there is a political parallelism if an organization exists, it's structure, there are members of the organization, now, such a thing does not exist anymore. And this is not just the, the Italian situation, but in part it's the Greek situation, in part it's the French situation. It's less and less of the, of the situation that we find in, in Germany that is marked by a great stability. Or in the UK, where there's Labour Party, the Tories that exist are structural and they, they work very, uh, in a very established way. Uh, but in many other countries, there are new organizations that are born, that appear and then disappear in in short time. How can you talk of political parallelism if uh, the media exists, but then the, the something to what to be parallel does not exist or more, or is very volatile? This is the fact. So this is why I'm saying that something that we wrote it, in, in the comparing media system, for instance, of the idea of political parallelism uh, is very weak. Uh, what is important of our media, of our uh, uh, suggested uh, framework is the idea that you don't mention, if I'm not wrong, in your book, the idea of rational legal authority. When clientelism, prevails over universalism, this is something which unfortunately remains very stable. And this affects the way in which news media work and the way in which uh, media are structured. So what I want to say that there is a, we have to go back to this idea of political culture that in some way is very stable and that survives in a way to the different changes that happens in the structure of, of, of the parties. Anyway, uh, as I say, very rich and very useful book because if I have to, to do some comparative analysis uh, among the European media system, I will go back to your book and to the data that you collected even in a very, uh, how to say, difficult, difficult way. Thanks. Thank you, Paolo. Thank you very much. And for the last good word, not the good. Christian. Yeah, yeah. Christian. Christian. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, first of all, really thank you for inviting me because it's a um, very interesting occasion, a very interesting book, and it's uh, a great honor for, for me to be here. So thank you again. And I will do uh, uh, the opposite that uh, Paolo Mancini did. So I will uh, speak very much of the uh, discussion we had today and a little of the book, but don't take it as a critique to the book because it's an encyclopedia, I think. <laughs> it's one of the books that made a, a point. 
and uh, we uh, really need books making a point. So, uh, Halin and Mancini, 2004 or 1997 in the uh, original uh, edition, and then uh, maybe we can uh, we can draw a line and start to to cite uh, Papatasanopoulos and Miconi, 2023. <laughs> Now, uh, let me uh, go to uh, one thing that has uh, always been a little uh, unfair uh, about uh, um, uh, comparing media systems, starting from the Italian uh, traduction that, uh, that was uh, uh, Sistemi di giornalismo, Modelli di giornalismo, so journalism models. Uh, that was unfair for the book because uh, it worked on the media systems as a whole and not only on journalistic media, as well as your book uh, does uh, speak about the media systems as a whole and not only of the journalistic media. Uh, but I will try to say something about the, the news media uh, because uh, uh, this um, uh, American challenge, for example, uh, seems to have some reactions in the fiction uh, area. Uh, you talk about the um, difficulties for a public uh, service media to uh, um, compete with new platforms. But for example, uh, Rai uh, recently did a um, very uh, popular uh, fiction, that is Mare Fuori, that uh, has been um, somehow taken by Netflix, so it's something that has the two logos, Rai and Netflix, one uh, against the other, and it's a very um, Good th the things to see, hmm? considering uh, what you what you said about the the the, the protection, the the role that the public media system could uh, could have. But what about the news? About the news, you said something about the, the necessity to safeguard the press, and it's absolutely uh, true. It's absolutely something that uh, the EU and the uh, the, the, the the states have to think too, but. I was wondering if we can say that there is an American challenge or a Russian challenge uh, or a Chinese challenge that is very precise about fiction. Is there an American, Russian or so on challenge that is uh, so precise in news? I don't think so. And I was thinking of it when uh, Paolo said that platforms doesn't have a national character. It's true. They may have a US market taking about uh, Facebook and X or um, maybe uh, a Chinese mark on, on TikTok. But in fact, they are doing one really revolutionary thing. They are um, building something like a new spirit of the times in the, uh, in the sense that Moren constructed this uh, this uh, this topic as something like a global Weltanschauung about how to how to do what because there is uh, there seems not to be a plan on how to do journalism in a global way so in this uh, um, in this way it is interesting to 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 cite the works we work together with in the media for democracy uh, monitor project. Uh, we work on how leading media, uh, leading news media survive digital transformation. So always this idea of uh, surviving or protecting or uh, safeguarding and so on. We talked about success and failure in news media performance uh, doing an, uh, once again a comparative analysis. It seems to me that there is a struggle against, uh, on the one side, leading news media, traditional media systems, all that we can read using the models, the systems, because there is some stability in this, although uh, Paolo Mancini uh, just said that there is a great uh, uh, mobility, but there is also stability. Then there is a vast uh, territory that, in my uh, opinion, uh, is um, uh, we are here in the center of Rome, and Romans used to uh, to mark uh, territories that they didn't know what were what was there with hic sunt leones. Mm. Uh, here they are the lions, and we have to understand who these lions are, how uh, do they coexist with the systems. Because the, the, the same idea of hybrid media systems uh, works on the interplay between uh, legacy media and uh, 
digital media, but now platform media also are, uh, constitute somehow a revolution about digital media in, uh, in, uh, in a strict sense. But again, and I, uh, I, I also have a little quotation from the book, uh, speaking about another uh, characteristic of the media systems uh, Mancini and Hollin worked about, that is professionalism of media systems, you say that the role played by journalists in the news production cycle has not been re replaced. I say something more, it is uh, uh, somehow a model for these new players. I'm thinking on the research that has been uh, done about new players like BuzzFeed, and BuzzFeed tried to work like the New York Times somehow. Uh, I personally did a, a research on how um, Will Media and Factanza, that are two important uh, outlets, I don't know how to, 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 um, to describe uh, something that makes journalism only on platform media. And one is uh, um, recognized by the order of journalists, one is not. But the one that is not, that is Factanza, if you hear the, um, the founder of Factanza, she said, I am a journalistic uh, um, tool because my women, my men work as a newsroom. So there are the, the, the what we have to do, I think, is to find what uh, uh, elements of these systems, of these models work with the, the lions. Mm? That is something that can help us to uh, describe what there is in this this vast area, and not only to to say hic sunt leones. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you, Andrea. Which one you? A couple of things to discuss together. Uh, first of all, thank you to Christian and Paolo for for coming. Um, I will start with uh, well, what Paolo was saying about the uh, richness of literature review. Uh, this is not our fault, it's yours, because it's, it's a demonstration of, uh, of uh, the impact of that book. So, I mean, but it, it, it's, it, 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 OK, it, it, it was a rhetorical, a rhetorical way for saying that the importance of Allen and Mancini's book can can hardly be exaggerated because basically it really opened up a, a, a new season for comparative media studies. Please. You, you, you say just to, to complement this, not only this book that uh, Paolo and Dan have done, and also in 2012 they, they made a kind of um, revision, including the Eastern European countries in 2012. Did, uh, Plus, 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 I mean, you have worked, uh, you know, uh, we, a whole school about. We, we have, we have worked on that book. Yes, we know. So, uh, you, you're, not, you're not, you are guilty as well. Okay. Uh, as you mentioned that book, what we didn't, what we didn't do is to try to, well, this sort of exercise, which appears here and there in literature now. Let, let's see where my countries would position itself in that map. This, this for us wouldn't make any sense. We, we, we had many discussions with our common friends, Zerinka Perushko and uh, Boguslav Dobek, and they are very skeptical about the, the very idea of Eastern media systems. We found with them at least five different ways of clustering Eastern European countries, and I, I, I'll, I'll be back to that. We tried uh, to take this to the somehow more abstract level of the method, because obviously comparative studies requires a methodology, and uh, we are all grateful to Dan and Paolo for that. For me, uh, what you were saying about systems and model is the most important theoretical knot. Uh, I'm a sociologist, so for me it's the never-ending struggle between theory and granular and observation, between granular data and ideal types. So we came across the relevance and the reliability of system itself as a notion, which is inevitable if you 
if you reflect on the theoretical side of your work. Uh, you were mentioning you, a fundamental aspect, which is stability. Media systems are no longer stable as they used to be. Uh, there is another one, in my opinion, which is another uh, breaking point in recent history of media system, which is somehow a system is, by definition, supposed to be stable. So systemic view, this is even real for uh, systemic sociology, can hardly explain historical change. That's a big, a big issue, big, bigger than, than me for sure. But systems somehow are also expected to be consistent, which means they what they have in common is more important than what would differentiate them from each other. So this means that the indicators you have are so significant and the theory behind that was so strong, for instance, political parallelism, to, to allow you to say that, well, that's okay, there is a liberal model. What I see now, what I see now is that systems are not consistent. Maybe it's another side of the same process, and maybe it, was, it, it is also due to what Christian was mentioning, the difference between working on news media and working on the media, which means that you have to consider then also, I don't know, a narrative, movies, a TV series. But still, would you today work on news media? Doesn't make any sense how you separate the news media from the rest when 60% of the people in a given country uh, get, get news on Facebook. So the, uh, the result, I would use another very abused word. I know that I'm not using system. I'm using patterns. I'm looking for something better because pattern in the last 15 years has been really well over. We know that. But pattern means something different because means that the, the regional the regional form, the regional, the regional model you obtain is always different depending on the variables we are using, which means, yes, it's another way for saying systems are not stable. So the geo, the geo culture of TikTok is not the same geo culture of Netflix. And anytime you move the pieces, anytime you change the indicators, anytime you cluster this data or this other data, you obtain a different geographical visualization. It, what, what I was talking about, about uh, Eastern media systems. Can be that the, there are authoritarian media systems, there are Eastern central media systems, can be different according to the set of variables that you use. My last words, there's another difference. Well, thank you, Christian, for what you were saying. Well, this book will never be as important as Paolo and Danali's book. We know that. But that the, the, besides the quality, there's also another difference that by man, yeah, I, 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 I like it too. Uh, uh, the, the other difference is our focus on Europe because it is an European project funded by them on Europeanization. Obviously, your model was not exactly about Europe. A liberal model also takes together the United States. So it, it was a different research question. What is quite interesting for me, speaking of patterns, is that you can use all the variables you want. In some cases, you have national media patterns. You can easily have global media partners. Obviously, platforms play a main part on that. And you have endless possible regional systems. If, for instance, the, the Baltic media systems is a very integrated one. Uh, in some cases in the Balkans, something similar happens. Then there are some non-American global media partners, for instance, connections between the Spanish media industry and Latin America. What, what would never shape out, never is a European media pattern, which basically doesn't exist. This is what, what now I'm, uh, I'm working at. And this, and this is pretty interesting because Europe has a strong reputation for many things, uh, cultural, lifestyle, blah, 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 is very weak in the field of, let's say, media systems or patterns. So this is it. If you want to... No, 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 you go, you go first. No, huh? no, no, it's okay. Uh, I, I, taking from what... Uh, Lisa Tse and uh, Andrea. Uh, uh, I forgot to say that, for instance, uh, as Christian has mentioned, the idea of professionalization was an important part of our idea of models. Models are different because there are different uh, professional figures. The fact is that now professionalism is becoming weaker and weaker. Uh, Social media. I mean, uh, you don't need any professional education to 
to circulate a news or to circulate a comment. Uh, it can be better or worse, but everybody can circulate whatever he likes. And this does not imply professionalization. It may be that in the future there will be some winning uh, <coughs> blog or source, but otherwise, <coughs> Professionalism generally is becoming weaker and weaker because, because we live in the era of digitalization. I like a lot what you say about uh, pattern. Can we talk of pattern rather than models today? Probably yes. And uh, I, I was just asked to review a paper written by some South American, uh, Latin American scholar, and they propose instead of model, instead of pattern, the idea of regime, media regime, mostly to be applied to the situation of media in, uh, in South America. That can be a, another idea to work on, not just models, uh, but rather pattern or regime. So uh, ideas can, can, can grow up. Uh, let me say one last word, but I know that we made a mistake in the book because uh, at the end, in the, end uh, uh, the most interesting part of our book, at least the part that has been useful has been the part on models, on the three models. And uh, we are not happy with this because uh, our aim at the very origin of a project was that of proposing analytical variables. And rather than looking at uh, analytical variables, scholars have looked at models, the three models. Uh, yes, interesting, but we would prefer, we had prefer that scholars were more interested in the list of variables rather than in the three models. And instead, the, 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 the common reading has been that of models rather on analytical variables that uh, we spend a lot of energy in looking for for analytical variable rather than on the three models. This is, uh, but this is uh, our complaint. Huh? I would agree with you. Okay. Yeah. Only. Uh, uh, one thing in which I, I disagree with uh, with Paolo because there is a, a professionality, a diverse professionality on doing information, fiction, and so on on social media. I think we have to uh, go beyond this idea that, that it is all amateur work. There is, uh, or there um, is becoming to be, uh, I think, a, a, a professional work on social media that can be read with uh, your uh, variables. <laughs> but maybe it's uh, it's a wish of mine. What I wanted to say that uh, your work back in the late 1990s, early 2000, uh, was um, inspiration for to many, for all of us. Uh, who work on uh, media, uh, comparative media analysis, uh, comparative media systems, whatever you like it or not. What we like, and we use the media systems or media models, you know, in our perception was the, the way of the analysis and how you put, you know, things yeah. and, and analyze uh, across the world, I would say, not uh, in Europe. So, and this is the, the subtitle of the book, Continuities and Discontinuities, because we don't oversee the discontinuities, but we also we don't want to overlook the continuities that there are, or even your the way that you analyze things, which was for us was more important. Even even in the way that uh, there are, I mean, there are things that we cannot 
uh, you know, continue saying that's the same. I mean, but to my understanding, uh, when we speak about, uh, you know, media or no media system uh, and not a media ecosystem, for me, are uh, the professional media. Uh, when you speak about media ecosystem, you include, uh, you know, social media as well, because social media are not professional. Now that will come to, to, to you. And that was our perception about it. And of course, you will face a lot of, of problems with uh, with Eastern uh, European media, because it's not the same any longer. It's, and Eastern European media is 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 wrong, you know, as we as we as we see it, and, and we discuss it many many times. This thing, you know, but uh, uh, you know, the Baltic, as Andrea said, is something different, you know, to the to the rest, you know, Balkan uh, countries are different they are in the media systems. Some of them look like more the Mediterranean yeah. and, uh, and, uh, and so on. Uh, but again, we wanted to see, because this book is also has a mainly a historical dimension. We wanted to see, you know, how things have changed since then. Have they changed? What do we say about it? And that's what the, the whole thing about. Uh, maybe that today I made a mistake because of, uh, I didn't pay enough attention to the subtitle of your book, which is, as to say, continuity and discontinuity. And it, rather, I put attention on the idea of systems. And instead, of the, what is important in the book is the idea that there are continuities, but also there are important dramatic shifts. Yeah, this is important. Probably. We have to pay more attention on to the subtitles of end of the world. As the a title, big, media, you know, media systems works better as a title for the publisher than the, the subtitle. Did you discuss for us, but for us is the, con the, the But subtitle. did you discuss this with the publisher? Yes. T title and subtitles. Yes. And yeah? to keep it prepared and, the... And it's there, okay. Yeah, maybe the perpetrator had in mind what I was saying. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's probably. Of course, it's perfect. <laughs> okay. As to what you were saying, so I, I, I see the, the, there is also a very strong uh, sort of uh, region, well, let's say how to call it. Uh, mid-range sub-regional dimension due to linguistic barriers which is incredibly strong germany G germany and austria and uh, i totally overlooked it while drawing the the project uh, four years ago it's in Fr france belgium uk ireland it's really really strong in terms of pressure of information system on the smaller country and the exportation of creative contents as well so it's a really intricate and complicated scenario so when right. Uh, he promised to read the book, and maybe that at certain points uh, we can have you, a you send, you, uh, you you send us only the positive comments, not the negative. <laughs> <laughs> you can go in. May I ask a pledge to the platforms? <laughs> but they are okay. they are recording everything. Yeah, but selfie to selfie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, and with the latest uh, photo opportunities, we conclude our, uh, you know, presentation. We'd like to thank very much Paolo Mancini and Cristiano Ruggiero for being with us and discussing the the book and the people that who uh, were in the floor and the and in the internet. I don't see I don't see them. Anyway, thank you very much.